correct way. I recognize as well Chairman of the IMC, Vice Chair, Ms. Passat, and the person who looks like he's thinking about how he's going to do it, Mr. Freddie Mark Wilfred, the campaign manager. I wouldn't be long. My colleague minister spoke to you about the party's plan and the way the party sees things. I'd like to just speak to you about what I wrote down here, the four steps to victory. Four steps. But before I go into them, I just want to address a few things. I'm extremely happy to see the array of candidates. I'm even happier that there are two pastors with us. Because three, you are excellent. While you were praying, I had a thought of the Israelites in Egypt. After several hundred years, God saw it fit that they would leave for the land of Canaan. And what many people don't know is that the distance between the land of Canaan and, and Egypt was apparently three months walking distance. It took them 40 years. And you know why it took 40 years? Because of murmuring. And they couldn't appreciate and understand what they had. And that's the message here. Last year, we won an election after fighting for 23 years. Yeah. Those who were involved in the fight understand that it was like a trench warfare fight. And whilst I might have been in the AFC, I was still in the fight. I never joined up the PPP. We fought. We won. We cannot afford to give away what we have won. <laughs> Ten years ago, the president, he was not president then, he and I were actually at a conference in the Bahamas and he said, Rafael, can you and I speak? And those who know him know he doesn't say much. And so I said, of course, sir. So we met that night and he shared certain things with me, which I will not, unless and until the day he speaks about it, I wouldn't. But at the end of it, uh, certain things were done. On the day when the results were announced, he shook my hand, I said to him, congratulations. He said, Raphael, this is Nassau, Bahamas. The point I'm making to you is that the man had a plan that I only realized and saw it come into shape last year, but he had that plan 10 years ago. He said, this is Nassau, Bahamas. Now I'm giving you the background because we believe sometimes that be because we won victory in a matter of days, we should have seen certain things that we demanded. Something like the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. That in a matter of months, I want a job I want this, I want that, I want, I want, I want. And if I don't have, I'm going to go into a rebellion. It sounds familiar to you? Yes. And so the first step to victory is trust. Trust your leadership. I don't always understand what President Granger is thinking and doing. But believe you me, as the months pass, I see it taking shape and I nod my head. And I say, I now see better. And when I don't understand, I wait. I don't run around bad mouthing him. I don't run around challenging him. I don't run around organizing a rebellion against him. Yeah. I wait because, you know, I trust in two things. I trust firstly in God because I believe that God brought that man to be president. I believe that God made him president for a time such as this. No other person could hold this country together who has the discipline and the integrity than he does. And that is why I trust God first and I trust him second. So the first step to any victory, and not just getting the victory, but holding it, is trust your leaders. The leaders of the AP and UAFC have decided that we will campaign in these elections not because we don't believe that the people of Barbica are entitled to have all of their candidates who they want, but because 
we are still consolidating the power. It has been 23 years, 23 brutal years. It hasn't been 23 nice years. We were in a fight, a war. You can't, in a few months, get everything that you expect. And therefore, it is important, as we begin to transition, this place that some people used to call a village, but we saw, and the president more than anyone, but he has had a vision to see as a tongue. It is important that the APNU AFC coalition holds the reins of the city council, the town council that is to come, until such time, until such time that the people can be able to take it over completely. So there's not that the president has been arrogant or he doesn't like Batika. It is because he cares like a good father. He wants to have a personal hold until such time. And that is why he asked Minister of Public Infrastructure, Minister of Communities, Mr. Bulkan, and myself, along with Commander uh, Ray Ragnall Best, to take charge of this town. That is how important this one place is to that man. And that is why I'm here. And so I come to the second step towards victory, and that is discipline. If you don't have it, you will go nowhere. Again, I take you back. I take you back to the wilderness. You remember the days? First it was Moses' own brother and sister who rose up against him. Because they couldn't understand. He knew what he was doing. Perhaps he could even articulate it and express it properly. And so they thought, but what you got? What makes you so different to us? We want it too. And up rose Korah. Remember the story, pastors? Datum and Abiram. And they decided they were going to challenge Moses. Moses didn't do them anything. What he had, they want. But how do we? Why are you taking so long? Why can't we get to the, to the promised land? What is our problem? Nine months. Not nine years. Nine months and you vex. Come on. The president has ordered that a road must run from Parika to Goshen. The money is in the budget for it now. The president has ordered that new generating sets be put down so that the blackouts that plague you will be removed. He's ordered that a water treatment plan be put down here. He's ordered that you be made a new tongue, that this be the first green tongue of the country. Come he didn't on. say George Tom. He didn't say Lethem. He didn't say Crabble Creek. He said Bartico. Yes. And yet, and still, there are those who lack discipline. That is the second step to victory. The third step is focus. If you lose your focus, you will die. You remember again, all those who did not make it to the promised land. God kept them for 40 years until he was able to remove all. Only their descendants were allowed to enter because they took their eyes off of the prize. They took their eyes off of the prize and became distracted. And if you become distracted, you'll be eaten and destroyed. So, Minister Ali said that a vote for any other group is a vote for the PPP. And it is true. You think, let me ask anybody here a question. Do you think that there's any group in any part of Guyana that is challenging the PPP in its own constituency? You know why? They know discipline. We have to learn it if we are to succeed. No discipline. If we were to allow the PVP to take this town, all of that development I spoke about, the road from Bartica to Madia, the president told the minister, Patterson last week, he said, I want to drive my car. That means he's doing his own driving from Bartica to Madia because he plans, he wants to retire here. And that's why I'm here. Because I will, I will stand and represent him and fight for him. And if I see disrespect, I will stand up against disrespect. And so, stay focused. The man in the green shirt is your campaign manager. Trust him. Believe in what he says. And we all have our own ideas. And we all could do things better. Gavin got the best cricketers. You sit down in a rum shop and you could fix a field better than the captain. You're on the field. You know. You know where to put a man when you hold for goal and what bring on in your ball now. We know everything. 
go down on the ground and see if you can take face a hard ball at 100 miles per hour. You batting. But we know, trust the leadership. President, and we've appointed, the president has appointed Mr. Mark Wilfred to be our campaign manager. I trust this man. I trust his political instincts. I trust him as being the best person who understands you because he's of you, he's from you. Trust him. And so remain focused. You're going to hear all kinds of things about Mr. Mark Wilfred, about Amna Ali, about Trotman, about Ms. Passad, about Chairman, about. And you know what? You can say things about them too. But as was said to you before, we are not here to run a campaign of dirt and a campaign of anger and a campaign of bitterness. We will remain focused on the prize, laying aside the sin and the weight which so easily besets us. Walking ahead steadily and in a focused way without becoming sidetracked and getting in and using them because you know what? Unfortunately, not for us, but for them, another group has reared its head. And so you will come against church members, you will come against family members, you will come against friends. You stay focused. They will try to aggravate you, just remain focused. We are not here against anyone. When they're ready, they will come home. When they're ready, they will come home. And the last matter, the last step that I want to speak to you about, four steps I said, is fight. Don't believe that a victory comes just like that. You've got to fight for it inch by inch, house by house, yard by yard, street by street. And when you gain each house, each member, each street, hold it. Don't take it for granted that because then people said they like me, I then ain't got to go back. I remember one story in 97, and I, I, uh, a leader of a certain political party, I wouldn't call his name, he, when he was very clear, declared, there was only one vote for him in the box. He said, hey, Raphael, this is impossible, this is fraud. <laughs> he said, man, this is my mom, this is my daughter, my wife voted, there's no going on. The man, he couldn't understand that his own family did not even vote for him. He took things for granted. We can't afford, not because you think you're winning or because you're the AP and you're AFC, and because this is Batica, that we got it locked. Nothing is locked until everything is locked down. You all understand that? So, trust your leadership. Be disciplined in the manner in which you campaign, in the way you respond. Stay focused and fight diligently fight cleanly, resist the temptation to knock that knock back and all that, but y'all show that you represent the president of Gaya, a man who is dignified, a man of integrity, and he is counting on you. He is counting on you to do what is right. So with those words said, I'd like to say, may God bless you all. I will be back here. I'm going to come and spend at least one week. I've got to find a place to stay. And I will be with you street by street, house by house, because we've got to do what we've got to do. Yeah. Thank you very much. And one second, I just remembered, even though I've got on a yellow shirt, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's to everyone, especially the ladies. And I've got to remember that it was on Valentine's Day that the APNU and the AFC signed the Cummings Burger Call. So yeah. this is an important day for us. Thank you very much.